You know, a couple weeks ago we talked about standing in the gap for people. And I tell you, it is more important now than ever before yes. that as us as believers, mm -hmm. we need to stand in the gap. Yes. I want to start out with 1 Peter 5, 8. 1 Peter 5, 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking who he can devour. And this is what we're seeing is happening. There are two things, two spirits that are active. One spirit is the spirit of detraction, mm -hmm. which causes confusion among people, churches, countries. Mm -hmm. Just It's a detraction. It just causes confusion. So when it causes confusion, you're not thinking straight. Mm -hmm. And we see the other word is a spirit of perversion. Mm -hmm. And we see so much perversion on, on television, on movies, and so forth. Uh, I got kind of upset that there's a movie in production by Disney right now that is called Pauline. And it's about an 18-year-old girl that spends the night with the devil and she becomes pregnant. And uh, Walt Disney's probably turning over his grave with this and that, that's their new project. And, uh, but we see so many people that are into the cult, they're into demons and, and you know, all different things and witchcraft. And it's becoming more of a norm. But in 1 Timothy 4, 1, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3. Now the Spirit speaketh expressively that in latter times, which I believe we're in, shall, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to, the, to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. Those are the two things I mentioned, detraction and, and perverseness is two of the things that devil is going to try to attack people. We see these spirits will start speaking lies in, a, in a hypocrisy, not telling the truth. Yeah. In fact, what they're, they're, the whole thing they do is these evil spirits will get people to believe half-truths. And there's just a little bit of truth there, but it's not all the way true. Yeah. So they get people confused and use, use things. You know, uh, we see over the years that things that were taboo 20, 30 years ago is now normal and everything. And, and people are openly sinning now, we're told that we're supposed to love the sinner and hate the sin. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason why we need to stand in the gap for the people, that yes. they will be delivered. Yes. You know, we have so many things. Now, if Satan, well, he speaks hypocrisies and having their conscience seared with a hired iron. Mm -hmm. See, in the media... And Satan's realm uses people. He really does. And after a while, you hear so much things over and over that your conscience just, you know, it becomes almost normal. And it's seared. You know, it would just, and to make you think, well, this is not bad, you know, because the people are this way or, and this and that. But sin is sin. I don't care how you label it as sin. And after a while, we get so accustomed to it, we don't think of it as sin anymore. Mm -hmm. And we we have this. Now, this is the thing that this next verse kind of something just jumped all out of me. It's in First Timothy 4 3, it says, mm -hmm. forbidding to marry 
And we see that there are more people that are living together or as everybody say, shacked up together. And they're not even thinking about marriage. And they'll, they'll have kids and still not be married and, and stuff. So it's one of the things, it's a self-centeredness thing. They don't want to, they don't want a commitment. Mm. But it says, now this is the one that jumped out at me. It says, and commanding to abstain from meats. There, there's a group, and don't get me wrong, I have friends that are vegetarians and vegan and stuff like this. But there are some the government is trying to produce right now. They're, they're already putting injections in the pork, in the pork that will cause, it's just like, the, it's almost like putting injections from COVID-19, the same type of stuff. They're putting it in the pork. And so we have to really watch what this, and, uh, and it's just, it's so they can mind control you. But anyway, uh, we see, but then there's some people, they're trying to get rid of animals altogether. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they killed so many, when egg prices went up, it's because the government killed 480,000 chickens. You know, that's a lot of chickens that were layers, you know, and so it just jacked it up. People are being paid not to raise animals anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's all it's all a control issue. Yep. But then there's, there's there's this hope that says, which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe and know the truth. So this is where we need to, really get into our word, get into prayer, and even seek out the truth, you know, because yeah. we see so many lies that are being told to us. Mm -hmm. And and it can, it seems like, oh, that's all right, you know. But after a while, if I was a politician, which I guess I was at one time, not knowing I was, but, and you know, because, you know, I got elected to be a mayor and all this stuff. And, uh, they, um, if I wanted to get something on you, I would tell a lie. And I tell that lie so much, then other people will start believing the lie. Uh -huh. And this is the thing that they put lies out there. They put things out there to kind of keep people from knowing the truth. So what Satan's whole thing is, he wants to steer our heart away from God. Yes. He wants to put fear in us. He wants to... <laughs> that he... Uh, so much that he wants us... So Satan wants to steer our thinking away from God. Yes. So he can take over our soul. Mm, my now, when I say soul, that's in the on the earth, our mind, will, and emotions. Mm -hmm. Steer us and get into fear, looking at other things in life, and you know, get us so confused, get that spirit of detraction on us so much that we don't think of God anymore because we're more in this state of confusion, or even. Mm -hmm get into the thing and I talk about spirit of uh, perverseness, but I want to go into that later. Um, Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. We are in the last days. If not, we're in a very good preview of it. Mm -hmm. But it's going to get worse before it gets better. And that's the reason why we need to get back to God quickly. Second Timothy 3, 2 says, For men shall be lovers of their self. And we've talked about this, how so many people, they're just so absorbed in their self. It's, it's all about them. 
They are so self-centered. They don't see anything else. They don't know how to give anymore because if it, they look at themselves, it, it's all about me. And we have to watch that. That these, this is in the last days they're going to be thinking about, you know, it's, it's me that counts. Mm -hmm. And then they look, don't even look at mm -hmm. other people. Um, then it says covetousness. That means they want something that's not yours. Yeah. They have such a desire. Now, with me, if somebody gets a new car, I say, yeah, I like it. And I'm thankful for them. Mm. You know, that's what we need to be. Get to the point, point of being thankful for other things. Mm. They're boasters, which, you know, that we get these people, look what I've done. And you see this even in the church, you know that people have to say what I've done and how I walked with God instead of just, you know, look at me, look at me. And so we have to watch this, that pride comes before a fall. We get sometimes so prideful. Uh, and then that's the next word, proud, blasphemers. That, you know, they just say anything else against God. But you know, to me, the ultimate blasphemy is when we don't listen to the Holy Spirit that's trying to give us direction. Wow. And trying to give us directions and we just turn him off. That Holy Spirit has come to comfort us and direct us to all truth. But when we ignore, that grieves the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because he is sent to a job that's his makeup to help each one of us. So when we don't listen to the Holy Spirit, we might as well say we're blasphemy. And this next thing, this is the reason why I even looked this up. It says disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Now, there was a thing that was going through my mind since last Saturday night. And it just, it just came over me, over me. You know, I talked about standing in the gap for people. But this phrase just came to me. They're coming for your children. That kept going through my mind every time I wake up or during the middle of the day, it kept saying, they're coming to, for our children. And we see this. That they're, the confusion and all this the sexual identity and all this and the, the misgender and all this. And, and like right now, you know, they're all up in a uproar now. And some that they taken that you can't talk about reproduction until they get in junior high and people are upset, you know. But some of the books that they've come out with, they're graphic, very graphic. And so we need to pray for our children. There are so many ideologies out there. There's so many things that are trying to pervert our kids and steer them away from God so Satan can have their soul. So he's, he's going to attack the church, and we see where churches are falling apart. Because the roots of, of, of dissension and misinformation and everything goes in and people are buying the lies. Mm, nice. mm -hmm. It says, then there are people at the last days, they will not have natural affection. Natural affection. Men and women affection. You know, they don't have that affection. That, what we're called. They're truce breakers. Mm -hmm. That they're trying to get rid of the truth. Mm -hmm. And they talk about theories and they talk about things like this. And they take these theories and say that it's actual fact. Mm -hmm. And we have to watch that. False accusers. 
I know I've been accused sometimes and I did I didn't know what the people were talking about. Some things I was supposed to said and done. I know in my heart I never did those things. You know, it's just like here. There's we found out who the woman was that spreads this thing. That uh, she tells people, "Don't go to our church here because we play with snakes." And I we we tracked it down and we know who the woman is. So we're just going to pray that she will quit saying that. You know. You know, and killing chickens. Well, only time we kill chickens is when we're hungry. I mean, you're not going to eat a live chicken. You know, now that's one thing I got to say about this church. A lot of times when people go home, they have fried, deep fried chicken or deep fried preachers, rotisserie preachers. Bake preacher, you know they 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 have all this going on. And I praise God. We I hope we don't have that around here. I I don't want to be fricasseed or anything like that. So we have to see the despisers of what is good, and we see this that good is good. Good is now evil, and evil is good, and we're seeing this at the last days. You know things that. We're taboo. Now that's the thing that we do. So we have part of a society, less than three, four percent of the people in the world is are in the United States is trying to control what everybody, the ninety-five to ninety-seven percent, you know, trying to make this is what you should think. Wow. They're traitors, uh, verse four, they're traitors, uh, heady, high minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Mm. We have to watch that. Yes. And then we see in the verse 5 there, 2 Timothy 3, 5, it says, they have a form of godliness. Mm -hmm. They look like they are, but then they, when they, in their behavior, it does not show it. But to the outside world, they are this. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. what the old saying, what, when you're alone or you're in the dark, that's where your true self is. Mm -hmm. And we have to watch that. And another thing we see here, if Satan can steer us away from God mm -hmm. and take our soul, our mind, will, and emotions, then we start denying the power of God. Wow. That God is totally omnipotent. He's all powerful. Oh. But see, sometimes we forget that. We get to the point that we get sometimes in unbelief. And the scripture says unbelief is a sin. So we have to watch that. And he's, this is the thing that he was telling Paul was telling them, but have it such a, if any of these things you have, turn away from it. Yeah. Turn away from it. And that's why we need to start trying to live the holy life. Not trying. No, because I don't want to say try anymore. When we say try, that's built in failure. Mm -hmm. You're already saying yeah. that you're going to fail. Yes. We need to say I will follow God's command. I will do this. I know sometimes we fall, but that's the reason why it's good that he's faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. That it's when we fall and we don't get back up mm -hmm. and repent, that's when we get in trouble because it just festers. It just festers and go nice. on and on. But you know, these are the things that it just kept hitting me so strong. Us, about us standing in the gap that is so strong that our children, and it doesn't matter how old they are, we need to stand in the gap for them. Yes. Because in this world, there's so much. And it's yes. just like I said, that Satan's like a roaring lion mm -hmm. to see who's going to mess up. Mm -hmm. 
But we need God's eyes are going to and fro to perform his word. That's the reason why we need to pray and do this. But we, we got to realize that a lot of times we're just said, oh, the devil doesn't exist, this and that and other. But you can see it everywhere. Yeah. And this is the reason why we need to stand in the gap and stand up. Mm -hmm. Stand up for the righteousness of God. We need to stand up and say enough, enough. Yeah. You know, and don't. The problem is sometimes we tolerate sin mm -hmm. because somebody, we like the person in this. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to love the person. But we tolerate their sin. And so when we to tolerate their sin, that means we're condoning their actions. So we have to watch away and just pray. Just pray that God sent his word and healed them and delivered from their destruction. And we have to really understand this. But the thing is, we're getting a generation now. You hardly have anybody going to church in the generation now. It has fallen 30% in the last year. Now, some people say they blame it on COVID and this, that. But, you know, we can't blame it on COVID. It's still the, the person's attitude and the person's yes. will and the person's emotions. And, yes. and, you know, we need to get to the point that says that I want to serve God and me and my house is going to serve the Lord. You know, if other people are not, that's fine. I'll pray for them. Yeah. But let me be the testimony to them by me serving God. So we look at this and that's the one thing that we need to really pray for our youth. Yeah. And I always get angry. They say the youth is the church of tomorrow. The youth of the church of the day. Yes. Your three-year-old is the church of the day. Yes. We don't need to depart millennialize things that say only this group can serve God or this mm -hmm. and that and other. Nah. No, everyone. I can learn something from a three-year-old or a 90-year-old. Yes. But we have to understand it says they're coming for our youth. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we have this sexual identity crisis. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they do, you know, surgically or anything. Their DNA, their bone structure, a man and woman is totally different. There's no way that they're just, they're trying to get, there's a law in a couple states now that, that if a kid wants to change their identity at school, they can, but they cannot tell the parents. And they're trying to put those in the book. Now, there's something like 38 states is banned that type of thinking, but we have 12 states that are in that realm. So we see that we have to understand that Satan's whole goal is to steer us away from God. And we have to watch that we don't walk in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Walk in the spirit. Nah, yes. mm -hmm. Now there's some things in the flesh you need to do because that's natural. But don't get into the unnatural. But we see uh, it just, it was such a burden to me that it was such a burden to me that when that started going through my mind, they're coming for your children. So I got on Google and I typed, they're coming for your children. You know, maybe I could find a sermon or scripture that fit that. And the first thing that pops up is a San Francisco gay choir singing a song, We're Coming for Your Children. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we got to pray for our children. Mm -hmm. 
because they're polluting their minds. They're steering them away from the truth. And that's why we need to pray that that we shall know the truth and the truth will set them free. And we got to quit tolerating. If, and you don't have to be mean or anything like that. Just pray for the people's souls. Yes. Break those that spirit of detraction that tries to cause confusion Amen. in people's mind. Yes. Pray against that detraction. Pray against that perverse spirit. Pray against the spirit of bondage that people are in. See, a lot of times people will pray, well, this person's an alcoholic, I want him delivered. But that's just a symptom of bondage. Yes. Pray against the, that bondage. Yes. And we always say that's the big three, the drinking and the drug and, and you know, and the sexual perversion. But there's uh, other things that we need to stand in the gap for people. Yes. So, but I just feel like we should pray for our children. Like the scripture says, the last day, the children are going to be disobedient to their parents. And we see that a lot. All you have to do is go to Walmart Ooh. and you see it. But then I also see the people, the parents, they're not showing much love. They're just showing the kid gets out of line and they just grab him and shake him. And, and you know, they're not walking as fast as they should. So we need to pray for the parents also. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. let us pray. Lord, we just come to you. And we bind any act that the devil is trying to put on people. We bind that right now. And we release the truth of the gospel. We release the truth that sets us free. Father, but we pray for our youth and our children that they are being bombarded with untruths. Father, we say protection around them. Father, we speak it. And even the people that are being used, we pray for their salvation and their deliverance. Father, we pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen, amen.